that helps your uh, digestive system work more efficiently so that you don't have an added load from food into your into your blood. In other words, your, your detox system is not overwhelmed. And uh, number three, use as little of the medication as possible. So as far as detox goes, using things like vitamin E and vitamin C, both important for the liver, selenium, uh, the, the uh, amino acid glutamine, these are all very important for the body's detoxification processes to work correctly. Sulfur is another nutrient, MSM sulfur. So making sure you're using these detox nutrients that I just talked about, the Bs and the Cs and selenium, et cetera, zinc also. Uh, making sure you're pounding those nutrients. And then secondly, making sure you're not putting any toxicity into the body through, through digestive, uh, uh, digestive uh, food allergens and, food and the foods that you uh, have a problem digesting or breaking down. If you want to do other things, uh, strengthening the digestive system is also good. Probiotics are detoxifying. Let me say that again. Probiotics are detoxifying. So making sure you're not, not just only taking the bioluminightly essence, but supporting the environment of the intestine so the, the, the bacteria can do their business correctly. And then the second question, if you're going to use a, a knockout pill, as you say, very, very cleverly there, Russell, uh, I, I think Benadryl is probably the gentlest one for you. You know what I'm talking about, Kev? You tried that? I tried it and didn't, um, didn't work as well. And, and, well, it it, uh, it actually it, it just um, by the sixth by the third day I tried it two nights. By the third day, I realized that it was canceling out my brain. Okay. All right. Then you'll have to use one of the fast acting ones, but they're really addicting. Things like Ambien, you know. Uh, uh, the benzodiazepines, as I say, trazodone is is kind of a, a heavy duty one. I would stay away from that one. Ambien's probably the that's the quickest acting and the the cleanest one, basically. All right, okay. that's that's and why it's so popular. That benzodiazepine. That, they call that a benzodiazepine. Yeah. Oh, well, that is Ambien. Yes. Well, it's a high tech one. High tech one. All right, I got to motivate Russell. Thanks for your call, man. Have you, you tried mel you tried melatonin? I take it right. Oh, that's part of the regimen that works. Unfortunately, um, alcohol is another part of the regimen that's indispensable to it, <laughs> and I've, I've got to quit that. Yeah, well, that's probably you probably have a lot of cortisol going on too. You probably have some some stress hormone cooking in there. I got, I want to get to some more calls here, John, uh, Russ. I got to go. Okay, man. Thanks, buddy. John, what's going on, man? John in Michigan. Yeah, Ben. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, have you ever heard of Professor Don Scott from Ontario? He's passed away, but he did research on the bioweaponized mycoplasma. No, I haven't. Is I think I've talked to you. I remember talking to you before, John, about this. Didn't we talk about this? Yeah, well, uh, Dr. Maury Hillman, who was a very bad man from Merck in the 50s, stayed carried by yep. everybody in North America. Uh, you, I lost you there for a second, John. Say that again. Dr. Maury Hillman, he was in charge of Merck in the 50s, and he stated disease agent is now carried by everybody in North America and possibly most people in the world. I don't but doubt it. It's part of all of these degenerative diseases, and, and Don Scott gives a test, tells you how you can test for this bio, this uh, bioweapon mycoplasma. But I, I, I relate it to Alzheimer's and also to uh, I, lupus. I'm not, John. I, 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 I don't deny, I, you know, you're raising a very interesting point. In addition to the toxicity that we spew into our environment unintentionally as a byproduct, now you've got to deal with bioweaponized mycoplasma, like military stuff, right? So only human beings crap in their water and then drink it. You know, how can we do this to our environment? What, what about the uranium stuff? Remember the whole the uranium dust thing from all the bombs they were dropping in Iraq? Depleted uranium. Depleted uranium shell dusting. I mean, how do we do this to our world? How can we live this way? What is going on? Who owns the world? The planet. Why do we people accept this? So, yes, John, your point is absolutely correct. But there well, lupus is what I, uh, I would like you to comment on. I found out that Glenn Fry's wife has lupus, and, and I have friends that have had lupus. And, Interesting. And, and Lup they, lupus is a hideous, hideous disease, John. It's an it's a autoimmune disease that affects the connective tissue. You know, 30% of the body is connective tissue. It's the stuff that holds us together. Can you imagine that stuff being attacked in an immune, in an immune uh, disease, an autoimmune disease? It's awful beyond description. What is severe lupus. I mean, it com occurs in degrees. Autoimmunity, and, and your point is well taken, there is toxicity that can initiate that, but we can't do anything about it. We don't have control there. Where we have control is for food. And that's why lupus, MS, uh, uh, scleroderma, Sjogren syndrome, whatever your flavor, type 1 diabetes, whatever your flavor of autoimmune disease is, focus on the immunity. The immune system is the digestive system, synonymous, you know, not exactly, 90%. 
So when you hear autoimmune, think food. Autoimmune food, autoimmune digestion, autoimmune bioluminitely essence and digestive enzymes and caloric restriction and fasting. If you want to exhibit or manifest or demonstrate uh, the power of the digestive system, the link between the digestive system, the importance of the digestive system when it comes to autoimmunity, just fast for 24 hours. Watch what happens to your symptoms. Almost guaranteed, you'll notice that they're reduced. Now, I'm not saying you, to fast forever, you have to eat again, but it will show you how important the connection is between the digestive tract and your autoimmune symptoms. Thanks for your call, John in Michigan. Appreciate it. Brian in Kentucky, what's cooking, man? How you doing? Uh, good. Um, I have a question about kidney stones. Yes. Uh, my dad recently had a large one broken up with a laser. Yes. They discovered he had four or five other ones also. Smaller. Diabetes, blood sugar. Again, simplify. Diabetes, blood sugar. When you have kidney stones, you, you, first thing you want to think about is a blood sugar issue. Sugar and toxicity in the blood, really, just toxic blood, uh, uh, becomes thick and sludgy. The kidneys have very tiny blood vessels. It's like a sp the kidneys are a spaghetti strainer for the blood, except the holes in the kidney spaghetti strainer are microscopic. So once the blood becomes clogged, that spaghetti strainer starts to clog up and stones start to develop. Accumulation of calcium also has to do with dying cells. When cells die, calcium is spewed off into the blood. And it can also have to do with acidity or toxicity. Calcium is one of the ways the body neutralizes acidity. So it's basically the body breaking down, and the first thing to think about is dirty blood, and that means food, and that also means sugar. So chronic kidney stones need to be regarded as first and foremost a, a, a digestive issue, and then secondly, or I don't want to say first, but together, a digestive issue and a blood sugar issue. That's the, those are the two areas you want to work with kidney stones. For, an immediate, for immediate relief or short-term relief, use uh, drink lots of fluids to help dilute the blood or thin the blood, but in the long run, you're going to have to focus on digestive health and the blood sugar system. Brian, I want to get one more call in, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm going to let you go. Thanks for your call, though. David in California. Let's see if we can... Uh, I've got about a minute and a half here, David. Okay. Uh, thanks for everything you do, Ben. I appreciate uh, that. Thank you. Glaroderma. You mentioned it, and I have a friend that has it, and I just want to know how to... Autoimmune again. It's an autoimmune, like with lupus, like we were just talking, and anytime you hear autoimmune, think food. Have your friend fast for 24 hours. Hours, watch what happens to his symptoms, and then he'll be on board. That means all the digestive things we talk about, caloric restriction, and don't forget a good old fundamental Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients Nutritional Supplement Program, and that means the Healthy Start Pack. And I'm sorry to do this to you, David. I just, we just got to go. We're out of time. I know. Hey, Thank thanks, you for your ben. call, man. Take care, brother. All right. That's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more awesome, great health information. Have yourselves an awesome, beautiful, spectacular, wonderful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now.